Hey everyone, it's Job, back again with another cryptocurrency how-to video. In this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step -step how to mine Ethereum. I'll go over the process of choosing an Ethereum wallet, joining a mining pool, and configuring the mining software. You'll find links and information below the video. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is choose an Ethereum wallet. There's several to choose from, ranging from hardware, software, online, and even paper wallets. I searched around on Google and found a great guide from Buy Bitcoin Worldwide. Use this guide to find which Ethereum wallet works best for you. In this video, I'm using the Mist wallet on a Windows operating system. So I download Mist and install it. When you run MIST in most local wallets for the first time, it'll connect to the Ethereum network and begin downloading the blockchain to your computer. This process will take some time and will vary depending on your internet connection. With MIST, you can click Launch Application and the blockchain will continue to download in the background. Once synced, you're ready to create your wallet account by clicking File, and then New Account. Create a password for your account. Do as the prompt suggests and back up your key files and password. If your drive crashes or you lose your key files, you'll not be able to recover or access your wallet. So keeping a backup is extremely important. To create a backup of your key files, click File, Backup, and then Accounts. The key file is located in the Key Store folder. Copy either the entire Key Store folder or the individual key file to a backup location. I recommend putting a backup on a USB thumb drive or some other kind of media and storing it in a fireproof safe safety deposit box, or another secure location. For an added level of security, you may consider encrypting this data with BitLocker or any other encryption software. If you have any problems running MIST or creating a wallet, your antivirus may be trying to block either geth.exe or the website it's trying to access. You may need to add exclusions for these two folders in your antivirus software. Now that we have an account created, you can select it and see your receiving address. This is the address you'll use to receive deposits of Ethereum into your wallet account. Now that we have a wallet account set up, we can move on to the next step of finding a mining pool to join. You'll want to join a mining pool to mine Ethereum. In a mining pool, you combine your hashing power with a pool of other miners. With your combined processing power, you have a greatly increased probability of solving a block and thus receiving Ethereum. The rewarded Ethereum is then split equally according to the amount of work you contributed to solving the block. I personally use Nanopool for mining Ethereum and will be using them in this video. Most pools have the same basic setup process, so if you do choose another pool, you'll notice similarities in the setup. To get started mining Ethereum on Nanopool, select Ethereum on their main page. Clicking on Help at the top will bring you to a page that will guide you through the setup. This brings us to our next step, selecting our mining software. I recommend using one of the miners listed on Nanopool's help page as they're trusted and easy to set up. I personally use Claymore Dual Miner, so I click the link to download the miner. I like to keep my miners in their own folder, so I copy the download to a folder I've named as Miners. One thing you may have to do in order to use mining software is to exclude them from your antivirus software. Every antivirus software is different, so you may have to look up on the internet how to add an exclusion for your particular solution. I'll show you how to add an exclusion in Windows Defender on Windows 10. For Windows Defender, open the Security Dashboard by either right-clicking its icon in the taskbar or clicking the Start button and then the gear icon, selecting Update and Security, click Windows Security, 
then click Virus and Threat Protection. Now that we're at the Security Center, click on Virus and Threat Protection Settings. Scroll down to the Exclusion section and click Add or Remove Exclusions. Now click on Add an Exclusion and select Folder. Browse to the folder where you have your miner and select that folder. Now that we have our exclusion set, we can extract our miner. Go to the folder where you have your miner located and extract the downloaded package. Be sure to extract to the same folder that you added to your exclusion list. Inside the extracted folder, you'll find all the miner files. For Claymore, we'll be using the file called start underscore only underscore f. This is a batch file that we'll configure to start up our miner. Right click this file and choose edit. Now back on Nanopool's help page, scroll down to the Mining Client section. Under Claymore, there's a Configuration section. Make sure your start underscore only underscore eth file looks just like this. If it doesn't, copy and paste the config into your file. Now we need to input our personal settings into this file. The default pool address is eth-eu1.nanopool.org. If you're using a different pool, you'll need to update this address and the stratum port. Now we need to put in our wallet address. Copy your wallet address and paste it into this file. Now we need to set our worker name. The worker name can be anything without spaces. I'll set mine to JobMiner1. Now set your email address. This will be used by Nanopool to email you anytime your miner goes offline, and it'll also be used as your password if you ever want to change your minimum payout. Now that this is all set, save your file. You can send a shortcut to this file to your desktop to launch it easier. We're now ready to start mining. To start your miner, just run this file you configured. In this case, start underscore only underscore f. If a Windows firewall prompt pops up, click Allow Access. If everything is set up correctly, it'll connect to Nanopool and start mining. There's overclock settings that you can use depending on your cards and the coin you're mining to get better hash rates, but I won't go over that in this video. I may make a video on overclock settings for these different coins on different GPUs in the future. Once your miner has ran for a bit, you'll see its data on Nanopool. To view this, go to the eth.nanopool.org page and search for your Ethereum address. This page will list all your mining stats. The default payout for Ethereum is set at 0.2 eth, so once you've mined 0.2 eth, it'll be transferred from Nanopool to your wallet. You can change the default payout limit by clicking on Settings then putting your email address you listed in your mining config file, then set the minimum payout. The lowest you can set your minimum payout is 0.05 F, the maximum 20 F. Congratulations, you're now mining Ethereum. I hope this video has been helpful and that you prosper in your mining and crypto coin endeavors. If you feel like donating, I've included some of my crypto addresses in the description below. Leave any questions in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and good luck.